So today what we're going to talk about is basically is SEO dead and what should you do instead? And this is because the spam update is actually finished rolling out today. And if you haven't already seen that, I'm going to share my screen and show you exactly what I am talking about right now. So if I share my screen right here, and by the way, if you have any questions, any comments, etc., feel free to post them. But basically what you can see here is that the Google spam update has finished its rollout as of March 2020. Now, one of the craziest things about this is you might have seen this update from Glenn also that basically talks about how 16 companies are dominating the world's Google search results, right? And I'm not going to be honest, I'm not going to lie to you or BS you, like SEO is looking pretty turbulent right now. And I'll show you a few examples of that and why I think that is, plus what you can do instead to make sure that you get your traffic back. So you've, if you've been hit by the update, if you've received any sort of penalties, etc., if you haven't got the traffic that you want to, or if you just want to grow your traffic and diversify and reduce the risk of SEO, this video is going to help you massively because I'm going to give you proof of every single thing that I'm doing. So yeah, 16 companies are dominating the search results, which is pretty crazy right there. So basically there's basically a bunch of websites and a bunch of companies that are basically dominating the SERPs. Additionally, Gail Brenton posted this update about how a lot of Parasite pages are actually still doing really well and are actually up like 23% since the update started. And additionally, I did this poll on my YouTube channel just two days ago. It's got 600 votes, as you can see right here. And most people have said that the Google Core update so far has been absolutely brutal, right? So SEO has been a brutal time for pretty much everyone. Zapier, Forbes, ClickUp, Content King says have done pretty well, which is absolutely true. And additionally, here's one of the scariest things that I can show you right now, right? And I'm going to pull this up and I'll show you an example. So if we say, like, what is SEO? What you actually see here is this is Google's search generative experience feature that's going to roll out. And I don't know if this is the final version or not. I've just got access to the beta, as you can see right here. So it's experimental right now. But you can see if you type in a keyword, for example, like what is SEO, normally the search results are going to look like this, right? So you've got like the feature snippet. You've got a few different people also ask questions, linking out to other websites. You've got a bunch of other websites and YouTube videos ranking right there. But now what you can actually see is the generative experience only links out to one other website, right? Pretty crazy. And so only one single website gets traffic from generative experience. So when I say that SEO is dead, I'm only saying that because I can judge it only what I can see and, and things could totally change, but this is pretty crazy in terms of what's going on and what's happening, etc. And so I just wanted to share that with you right now. And I'm gonna show you some solutions that work really well for me based on what I've seen so far. So I'm going to pull up some of the ways that I actually get traffic and how you can do the same without SEO. And this is going to be a really interesting one. So one of the first things that I'm going to talk about is actually using Twitter to get clicks to your website. Because the thing is, right, if you've got a website and I'm going to, I'm going to delete this previous drawing that I've done, basically you've, you're trying to make money at the end of the funnel, right? And you have this machine, which is your website. And that's trying to make money. Now, the thing is right now, you're getting traffic from SEO, but that's only one way to get traffic. And really, all you want to do is plug in more traffic to your website and send more traffic to your offer so that you make more money. That's essentially what the whole game is about. So how can you do that? That's what I'm going to show you right now. Now, one of the best ways to do this is actually with Twitter. You can get way more clicks from Twitter than almost anything else that I've seen out there. And I'll show you exactly how I'm using it to get more traffic. So you can see, for example, we've got 15,000 followers right here. And um, this is something that we've just grown organically. We haven't done like ads or anything like that. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please feel free to smash a like on it. And I hope you're enjoying it so far. But yeah, this is, this is pretty crazy times right here. So let me just, I'm just gonna update the thumbnail for this existing video just so that we can let me edit that right now. But yeah, essentially what we're doing on Twitter is we're posting content regularly and that regular content is attracting clicks to our website, right? So for example, if I post earlier today about this chart right here, as you can see, 
You can actually get more traffic to your pages and to your website to make more money by just linking out to your funnels underneath, right? So I can post a chart like this, maybe it gets like a thousand views or whatever. And then underneath I'll be like, you like more free stuff? Okay, check out the acceleration session or check out my SEO course, it's free. Or check out my YouTube videos, etc. And basically with every single tweet that you post, you can generate more traffic to your website which is going to bring you more money to your site as well. I'm just going to delete this other live that I created because I messed one up earlier and I don't want to do that. So let me just edit that right here and I'm going to delete this one so it doesn't confuse the algorithm. There we go. And hopefully we'll get more people on the show. All right. So yeah, basically what I do is I post about five, 10 times a day. As you can see, we did have a virtual assistant on here, but we decided that I think it's better to tweet less, but tweet better quality. So you can see as well, what we often do is we post these two steps like this, where we actually get people to reply yes, if they wanna get access to whatever free tool or free blog post or free video we're giving away. And by doing that, we get people to opt in themselves to see the content, as you can see right here. And then we can just send them the content and send more traffic to our website, which makes us more money. And they get access to the free content, plus we get more money as a result, because if we go back to this particular example, we're making money, right? Because we're funneling more traffic from Twitter or SEO to our website, which then brings in more money. As a really good example of how diversified we were, after the whole situation of some of the websites receiving manual action penalties recently, and you know, I'm not ranking for my own name right now when it comes to my actual website, but I am ranking with my other social media channels because these other channels funnel traffic to my sales funnels. We make mon more money as a result. So actually the number of sales calls booked last week tripled after the whole event, right? Which is absolutely insane. So even though my website got de-indexed, my agency website got de-indexed because of all the other channels and all the other social media content that we were creating, our sales actually tripled week on week because these funnels are actually kind of like more optimized for, for generating sales, right? And I'll give you an example. If we type in my name right here, and we type that into Google, obviously my website, julianggoldie.com, doesn't show up because of the manual action penalty, but because people are gonna land on my YouTube channel or my Twitter channel instead, well, actually that's better at converting traffic into money. And this is absolutely crazy. And I would highly recommend the same for you too, right? So when people land on the website, on the, on the YouTube channel right here, they get funneled into our sales funnels and then we make more money. And it's converting better than our own website. So pretty crazy stuff right there. And I would recommend that to you as well. If you're trying to, to get more traffic and, and trying to grow a following and, and trying to diversify from SEO. Now, Sora says, is it like Parasite SEO? I would say no, it's very different because essentially all you're doing is you're building out extra channels that diversify you from SEO so that you can grow the amount of traffic going to your website. I mean, as a really good example of this, if you haven't seen it already, I'm gonna pull up a video that was very interesting earlier this week, which is from Jesse Cunningham. And he talks about basically how he uses, where is it now? I'm gonna try and find this on his channel. There we go, yeah. How he uses Facebook to generate thousands of dollars, right? So, and that's to the website that actually got a manual action penalty as well. And so you're not using Parasite SEO, you're just creating multiple channels to generate more traffic. Now, how do you generate more traffic from Twitter? Just post five or 10 times a day, post interesting stuff that people like, and then under every single tweet, link out to your funnels and generate more traffic there, or link out to your blog pages, et cetera. And if you do that consistently over time, you'll find that the traffic, the following, and the number of clicks you get to your website and the money you make will all increase along the way. So yeah, basically that's how it goes. So. Another method that we're actually using, of course, is YouTube to generate more traffic. Now, basically the way that this goes, and I'm gonna show you this on a smaller channel as well. This is my Julian Goldie agency channel. What you can see here is that we just create videos every single day with lots of valuable information. And as a result, we diversify the traffic that we get. Now you might say, right, okay, how do you come up with ideas? And I would say, I just create content based on what other people ask me, kind of like SEO as well, right? So you're trying to find keywords so you can create content around that people are searching into Google or into YouTube. And then from there, you can find video ideas that are going to you know, diversify your traffic, right? And as an example of how quickly you can grow, if we pull up my YouTube channel right here, and we look, say, over, I don't know, the last, the last, the whole lifetime of the channel, you can see 
the we cre- started creating videos back in 2021 and over time that traffic just exponentially increased as you can see right here and it's a really good way to generate traffic to convert leads and sales to, to build a relationship and the key with any sort of website is you're not so much focused on seo you're focused on building an audience if you have a good audience that trusts you and likes you and enjoys interacting with you then you're gonna make more money reliable prepper says great video thank you thank you very much and saga says s great video as well yeah thanks so much for watching appreciate it and yeah i'm hoping this is helping because the last thing that i want you to do as an audience is to rely on one single channel if you put all your eggs in one basket and then you know your basket gets smashed up to smithereens during the latest core update it's not very good whereas if you have these multiple channels that are all generating traffic even if they're only generating like 20 percent of the traffic that seo does well then at least you can be found and at least you can still make money even if you get the index or whatever and i think this is the future the other thing that i would say is when you're creating channels like youtube or twitter etc well these are eat signals that develop experience expertise authority and trust and as a result are going to improve the traffic on your website anyway and that's one of the things i was thinking about when it came to this website where is it now cakes by mk.com right so a lot of people are complaining that they haven't got enough authority to actually rank but if you look at this particular website dr12 getting 234,000 traffic have only benefited from all the updates so the helpful content update and everything else and it's not because they're they're doing anything crazy with their seo strategy what they're actually doing is just creating great content and diversifying the traffic and creating sort of eat signals along the way so if we put cakes by mk into youtube right here you can see they've got 446,000 visitors and subscribers to their channel right so it's all about diversifying and by diversifying and building up the eat across all your brand traffic then you're going to grow as a result and it's going to be better for SEO. Doug Cunnington says, what's up, yeah? Welcome to the channel, Doug. Good to have a legend on the channel. Appreciate you commenting, and hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be on your channel soon. It'd be cool. Hopefully, hope to do a video with you soon. Unknown says, is Parasite SEO dead? I think that it's going to take a big hit come, you know, come probably May the 5th when Google start rolling down their Parasite SEO update. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And Chillflow says two of my sites got smacked really hard. Just built a new one a week ago and published four articles using AI. One ranks number six. I just a day. We'll see how long it will be there. That's the thing. Like if you're creating content, however you're creating it, just make sure that you are diversifying the traffic that you get. Because like I say, if you get hit, if Google decides, oh, we don't like all AI content one day, then that's okay because you can diversify your traffic. You can get traffic from YouTube, from Twitter, and some of the other channels I'm going to show you. So another way that we actually get traffic is from our Facebook group, right? So this is my Facebook group right here, and it's actually growing really quickly. So you can see it's at nearly 7,000 members, as you can see right here. And what you can actually do is I do daily live videos just to connect with the audience. And I find it a fun way to diversify my traffic as well. And right at the top of the Facebook group, you'll see this feature post, right? And this sends traffic in three different ways to my funnels. So it sends traffic to my strategy session funnel right here, my free course funnel right there, and also my free videos on YouTube, right? So because we're funneling people into the Facebook group and because people engage with our content, as a result, we can get more clicks out of our Facebook group which then generates more money from our website, even if we get hit in terms of SEO. And this is just a really powerful way, again, to, to generate more traffic. Now, one of the content strategies I like to use is post videos regularly into the Facebook group. Additionally, what I also do is create these two-step posts where people can opt in. So you can see, for example, we created this Facebook group post right here for a free AI tool to help people diversify their traffic. And you can see it's got 15 comments already. So loads of engagement right there. And that's only within a few hours. So this is a really powerful way to, to, you know, diversify your traffic. John Dave says, yes, sir. Shout out to John Dave. And Dan Jones says, how much was your bird site making? So it was making previously, I think maximum it was making was like a thousand dollars a month, something like that, maybe 1,500. And yeah, to this day, it still makes a few hundred dollars, even after it got a manual action penalty. Mr. Frank has given a nice little tip. Thank you very much. And 
says, any use in focusing on Bing or Pinterest? I've heard amazing things about Pinterest lately. I haven't cracked the code and that's why I'm not focusing on it in this particular video. But if I get really good at Pinterest marketing, I have a few friends that might be able to teach me a few tips and then I can share them on YouTube, then for sure I'll be sharing those techniques because I think Pinterest is an awesome way to get traffic, particularly depending on who your target market is, right? So for example, if you're targeting, I don't know, maybe a an audience interested in interior design or something like that, then Pinterest can generate a lot of traffic for sure. But yeah, Facebook groups are good as well. John Dave says, yes, Mr. Frank, you can generate traffic with, with Pinterest. Bing is another one as well. So I would highly recommend that if you haven't already, get Bing Webmaster Tools, right? Bing Webmaster Tools, I'm gonna pull this up right now and I'll show you some examples. So this is for chipperbirds.com. So even though this website received a manual action penalty, oh, I can't log in, I must be on a different account. But even though, we were on a manual action penalty for chipperbirds.com for, for being a public case study that got hit. It doesn't matter because actually we still get traffic from Bing. We still make a, you know, still make like a few hundred dollars a month doing this. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And then, yeah, the other content method that we actually post is this sort of stuff like tweets and that sort of thing, crediting people, for example, like this one right here, reached 600 people already and that's in less than 24 hours bunch of comments under there feel free to check out the facebook group if you want to learn how to how to build these out but yeah really good way of just building an audience and i think here's the key is like just building an audience as much as you can the kent S sussex tea and coffee company says hey julian what's your thoughts on tiktok and is it worth the time and effort for e-commerce businesses? I think for e-commerce businesses, absolutely is a great way to diversify your traffic. It makes total sense. What TikTok have also introduced is, I think it's called like TikTok shop or something like that. Basically people can buy directly on the platform. That makes total sense to me because it's kind of like a native way to get more money from, from other channels. And I think TikTok as well, it works really well with products that are super interesting and viral. So for example, I don't know, let's say you're selling something spiritual on e-commerce on TikTok. That's a great way to, to generate content. Like you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. I actually went to a mastermind last year and someone was selling, like, I think they were selling samurai swords or something like that. And they were showing all this crazy stuff on TikTok where you could like chop up a watermelon and then it looked really cool on TikTok. They got tons of traffic and as a result, they make more money. Jay and Gildo says, YouTube SEO is the future. Yeah, I think YouTube is honestly one of the best and most powerful ways to create an audience really quickly. I don't want to give away some of my friends' niches, but I have a lot of YouTuber friends who are making tons of money. And the reason this is so powerful for generating traffic is, let me just mute this so that I can click on some of these videos. If we click on this one, for example, what you can actually do is you can put links to your funnels inside the description. You can also put links to your funnels inside the comments. You can create content every single day. And bear in mind, right? If you create a blog on your article and it's a brand new blog, you might you might not get traffic to that blog for like maybe two, three months, etc. If you create a YouTube video, you can get thousands of views within 24 hours of creating it, right? And so there's nothing that compares to YouTube in terms of SEO. Additionally, it ranks really well on Google search and is an absolutely amazing way to build a relationship with an audience. Now, if you wanna make money, people are gonna buy from those they know, like, and trust. And so if, you can create videos where people learn to like and know and trust you and you give lots of value and lots of tips like I'm doing in this video, for example, then this is just such a great way to build a relationship with an audience and, and generate that that sort of relationship that, that brings in more sales and people want to work with you and hire you and etc. Now, just on that particular subject, Gildo says, the thing I'm not like you, I'm not good at talking to camera, right? I can tell you now, I was terrible at talking on camera, right? So if you look at my old videos, in fact, the first couple, I don't think I even have my face on. Then there's some old ones where I'm like in this dodgy Hawaiian shirt, as you can see right here. And I have no idea how to talk to the camera at all. It's pretty embarrassing, honestly. And yeah, you, so you can see the old receding hairline before the hair transplant right there, bit of a mustache going on. And I think I'm recording next to my wardrobe. This was probably about four years ago, as you can see right here. But the only way you can get good at this is by practice. And that's why I create videos every single day, just so that I can train myself to become better and better and better. Speaking off the cuff, 
uh, improving my public speaking skills and making entertaining content that people enjoy, etc. And yeah, YouTube is the best training ground for that, not just for YouTube, but for everything. So yeah, if you want to get better at talking on camera, just do it more often, do it every single day or do it twice a day and, and learn to enjoy it. John Dave says YouTube equals trust. Absolutely. It's, it's just such a powerful way to, to create content that actually resonates with people. And the thing is, what you'll find as well is like when you go to events and that sort of thing, people recognize you if they're in the same industry as you. And that sparks up relationships, it sparks opportunities to work with other people, makes it far easier to sell to people, and it just creates this, this positive feedback loop. Saga says, which website are you earning the most money from? And I would say one of my private case studies that I can't reveal publicly. So yeah, if you want to check that out, links in the comments for the mastermind. But yeah, I will over a hundred websites in the background making money, which is crazy. Let's have a look at some of the other comments before I keep moving on. Chill Flow says, I'm from Bali. TikTok doesn't work for me as my content can't reach an audience outside Indonesia. I do Pinterest and Facebook. It works well. One of the tips, and I've not tested this myself, one of the tips that I've heard about TikTok marketing, right, is get a, I'm going to come on to some more traffic methods in a minute, but if you want to get more, more traffic from TikTok and you want to reach an audience that's outside the country you're in, then what you can do is you can get a phone with a SIM card from that country installed inside the phone and then install TikTok. From what I've heard, that's very effective. And the other thing you could do is just hire someone in that country and then they can upload the content directly. Did you know says, what is your recommendation for a new site to increase traffic? I have a blog section and as well recipe and I post on socials at least twice a week, but the traffic and conversion is low. All right. So I would say if you want to generate traffic, SEO, Still a really good way to get traffic, even though it says it's dead on this particular title. I wouldn't say it's 100% dead. I think it's just, you've got to be very careful of diversifying your traffic because if you just rely on SEO and then you get hit one day, that wipes out someone's whole business. And that's a story that's been repeated every single update sometimes. So when it comes to, to generating traffic, yeah, do SEO, do all the basics, you know, keywords, content, backlinks, hiring, setting up systems, etc., And then additionally, uh, make sure that you, I, I would say focus on YouTube, right? Now, in terms of a game plan for YouTube, what I'd highly recommend, and I've actually got some courses on this if you, if you check out my channel, but basically create like a 90 day plan, right? So give yourself 90 days, set a get out point in terms of, okay, at what point will you stop? and understand what are the daily actions required. Now I'm going to share my screen. I'll show you exactly what I mean by this. And I can talk it through with you in terms of a game plan and how exactly it would work step by step. So let's pull up an example right here, as you can see. Now, in terms of a game plan for YouTube, let's say, I would say, yeah, post a video every single day, right? And you might say that sounds hard, Absolutely. YouTube is a bit of a grind, but it's hundred percent worth it. And it's one of the fastest ways to grow an audience. So it depends how motivated you are, but I would highly recommend that you do it. And then set a get out point, right? So AKA at what point will you stop? Right? So if it's like, if you like, right. If I don't get 100 views per video, then I'll stop, right? That's your get out point. And the reason I recommend a get out point is so that you don't go through the sunk cost fallacy and keep doing something that isn't actually working. So make sure that you do set a get out point and just say, right, at this point, I'm going to stop. Then also figure out what are the daily actions required, right? So if you're going to do a video every single day, well, you're going to have to record one video, edit it, create a thumbnail, and that's basically it, right? You rinse and repeat that every single day. So they're the daily actions. And you just do that first thing in the morning so that you don't get distracted by anything else before you complete that challenge. Then you would track your inputs and outputs on a sheet, right? So you would track, okay, here's a video. Here's how many views it got. Here's how much traction it got, etc. And then just record it every single day. Now, finally, I would recommend that you crack the code, systemize it, aka build very good and productive systems, and hire someone to help you. So you can hire someone for the thumbnails and the, the editing, etc. That's basically how it goes, step by step. Jose says, off topic, but can't block a session with your link for free SEO strategy session. Hi from France. Hey Joe, welcome 
to the channel. Thanks very much for, you've probably, you're have probably probably not new to the channel, but thanks very much for trying to book in a call. So if you want to book in a call, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it, right? So you click on this link right here. Then you would book your free SEO strategy session, plug in your details. For example, so I'm just going to plug in my website right there. Hit enter like so. Then we'll say, right, I want some backlinks, blah, blah, blah. And then if you spend less than, I think it's less than $500 a month, you won't be able to book in a call. You'll get sent to the waiting list page. But if, because we can't work with clients, you know, not spending less than $500 a month, we can't do a good job for them. But then from here, what you do is you would just book in the call right here. Now I'm just going to open this up in incognito because I think as I'm logged into as I'm logged into high level, it won't let me check it out, but let's see. Maybe it's just not loading and it's broken for a minute. If not, feel free to email me at, at me at juliangolly.com. Why is that not loading? That's crazy. Anyway, I'm going to move on. Thanks for letting me know, Joe, and I'll get that fixed. Let's keep going now. Dan says you create multiple websites in the same niche. Quite often... If it's working really well, yeah, we'll create websites in the same niche. Saga says, what about Cura and Medium for traffic? Honestly, I didn't get a lot of traffic from Cura. So I did try it, but it didn't work very well for me. And I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. So yeah, but it's a good way to get a lot of impressions, but I wouldn't say it's a good way to get a lot of traffic. Also, Cura, what they tend to do is actually remove your, your links if you add them to videos, etc., or if you insert videos inside your posts. Coding, Shiksha says, is Google Core Updates rolled out? I just checked spam updates completed, but Core Update is not uploaded. Yeah, Core Update is not actually working right now. So it's, uh, sorry, so it's still being rolled out as we speak. So it might take a little bit of time there. But yeah, everything else is, is getting sorted out. And the spam update has just finished. I'm trying to check out this strategy session. Why is it not allowing me to book? Anyway, let's keep going right now. So... Let's look at some of the other ways that we can generate traffic. So YouTube lives, Twitter, YouTube, etc. we've talked about. We have also talked about Bing and we've talked about Facebook groups as well. So let's talk about LinkedIn right now. I'm going to pull up LinkedIn. I'll show you exactly how this works step by step. So if we go onto LinkedIn right now and what I actually do, if we check out the post right here, this is how I generate traffic to my website is we post content of several times a day, right? So for example, this video right here, this one, this one, and we do a lot of polls, right? So you can see, for example, this poll right here, I would say polls work. Oh, I'm not even sharing my screen. I'm going to share that now. Let me hit share and I'll share my entire screen. Okay. So this is my LinkedIn profile right here. You see all my posts. So we post a lot of videos, etc. And if we scroll down, one of the things that's best for getting a lot of impressions and a lot of engagement on LinkedIn is actually posting polls, like you can see right here. Super basic, just like one line, one question. And this is a good way to get traffic, especially if you're a B2B website, right? So you can see that we post a question. We have a little poll right here. It reached 1,500 people and we've got three days left on the poll. So it'll probably get even more traffic. We had a couple of uh, hashtags right there. But the key here is that we actually send people to this book and appointment section, right? And that's how we get traffic from LinkedIn directly to our funnels. So again, if you're in a B2B space, this is a really powerful way to generate more traffic to your funnels by creating polls, by posting videos, et cetera, by doing lives on there. And then you can generate more traffic and, and, and diversify across that. Just going to answer some more questions. JN says, you're planning to focus on YouTube now. So I still have hundreds. I mean, I, have, I still have over a hundred AI, I mean, uh, SEO case studies. So I still have over a hundred case studies for SEO. So I just think it's a case of making sure that you do diversify everything, right? So don't just focus on one channel. Doug says, yo, hit that thumbs up. If you dig it, it helps out for the algo. Yeah. Thanks so much. Please do smash a like for the algorithm. Appreciate it, Doug. And shout out to Doug Cunnington. Check out his channel if you haven't already. He's got an awesome channel on SEO and marketing and that sort of thing. Frank Masotti says, topical authority, keywords of both. 
So I would say if you're if you're doing keyword research, focus on top of maps for now, unless you're just doing this one off. Mr. Frank says for YouTube, how do you get enough ideas for a daily update? So I'm going to show you something quite interesting right now. Let me try and pull this up and I'll, I'll give you an example of how it works step by step. Let me just pull up my video tracker right here and I'll show you exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it. All right, here we go. This is my video performance tracker, right? And basically what you want to do first of all is create lots of content around loads of different topics and then measure when you posted the content, the video title, how many views it actually got, any sort of tests you ran and that sort of thing as well. And I also like to set these hypotheses where I say, right, okay, if I do this, this, here's how many views I'm going to get, right? You see, I posted a video pretty much every single day for a long time now. And so by doing this, you get loads of, you just cover everything you possibly can think of and you figure out, okay, what are the topics that people are very interested in, right? So for example, like SEO workflows, how to make money, backlinks, et cetera. These are the topics that people are interested in, Google Core Update. These are videos that are very topical right now. And therefore, from there, you get a bunch of ideas and lots of data on which topics perform well and which ones don't, right? And so from there, you can easily figure it out. That's how I'd recommend doing it. Shahid says, nice to hear from you. Nice to hear from you too. And El Elisir says, guys, you have a legend. Doug Cunnington is here. Thumbs up for these legends. Thank you very much. Yeah, we got... We got Doug, the legend himself, on the live. So thanks so much for being on, man. Appreciate it. Should get you on the live next time or a YouTube interview at least. Coding Shisha says, why we have only these big companies monopolies such as Google and search engines and YouTube and video and Facebook and social, will any other companies come in the future? I think there's always opportunities, right? Like, for example, even Rumble. Rumble is, is pretty popular right now. There's a lot of people on there. And I think you can build an audience anywhere. But the main thing is diversify, right? So like, YouTube is absolutely amazing. Google is absolutely amazing, but don't just rely on one channel because you never know when you can get hit. You never know when a, a channel can get taken down, etc. And so you have to, the name of the game, even if you are not doing SEO, but you're doing LinkedIn, well, even with LinkedIn, you still want to diversify everything. And that's what I would focus on. That's all it's about. Yeah, Jose says, this is the window that is bugging for me. Sorry about that, Jose. I'm honestly really sorry about that. And... That's a bit annoying because we, we want to get sales calls in. I've not seen that recently, but I'm going to try and fix it tonight after the live and I'll get back to you. Hopefully, if you want to drop me an email, me at juliangolden.com and we can give you some freebies to say sorry and, and send you to a link to booking a call once it's sorted out. Melted Brain says, if I merely auto share a blog post on my LinkedIn profile, do you think Google would consider that a parasite? No, but I would also say if you just merely share a link, on LinkedIn, I'm gonna get the old upright Go posture improver right here on halfway through the video. But yeah, if you're, if you're just merely posting like an article on LinkedIn, that's not a very good way to get engagement, right? So you really wanna think, okay, what are people looking for on that particular platform, right? So for example, on LinkedIn, if you're trying to diversify your traffic, then you wouldn't actually focus on just sharing an article. You'd, you'd create some polls, for example. Polls work really well. Or for example, YouTube, you can, convert an article that you've got into a video, but you have to think, okay, how can I make it entertaining? How can I talk in a way that attracts people and, and gives them value, etc.? How can I create some tips in this video that probably wouldn't work in an article, but would work elsewhere? That's what you want to focus on. And Jay Gildo says, thanks for your prompts. We're happy to help. Mamid says, hey boss. We've got boss, how are you? I'm great, thanks. Hope you're well. And Pinterest traffic, I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to give some tips on that. I'm not a guest yo, so I only show stuff, I only actually show stuff that actually works for me, honestly. So going to keep going through there right now, and we'll talk about some other ways to get traffic. So just to recap, we have talked about so far Twitter, we've talked about YouTube, we've talked about Facebook groups, we've talked about LinkedIn. And one of the other ways that I want to show you how to get traffic is actually through email lists, right? So email lists are super powerful because, for example, if you're getting traffic from other channels, then you don't own that traffic. It doesn't belong to you. And you only rented it until one day the algorithm decides to go against you, right? And that could happen at any time with no warning, which means for a lot of people, for example, during the core update, they got all their traffic wiped out overnight with no warning. 
And the problem with that is now they don't have a business where if, if they collected those emails, then they would still be able to get leads and sales through their email list by nurturing that relationship, even if one of their channels, for example, like YouTube or Twitter or whatever, got taken down. And so this is one of the most powerful ways to, to take traffic that you've already got and turn it into traffic that you do own. Now, I'm going to come on to some more information about that in a second, but let's have a look what else we've got. So Dan Jones says, how are you making money from your bird website without ads? Affiliate is one of the best ways to make money. Amazon affiliate reviews, etc. And Alicia says, since most people have been clapped by Big G, I'd say Facebook and Pinterest is the way to go. I'm testing this tool, Pin Generator Automated Pinterest Marketing from AppSumo. That's quite interesting. I have to check that out too. But yeah, basically, the, the way forward is diversifying. And let's have a look what else we've got. Web Ninja AI says, can you still use AI to draft content? And if you have already done AI generated content, do you have to delete it? So Google actually said in the AI generated outlines, uh, the AI, I think it's like AI guidelines. So let me try and find that now. Where is it here? Yeah, search guidance about AI content. They've said they reward high quality content, however it's produced. But the key here is high quality content, right? So what I'd recommend if you wanna learn how to create high quality content is checking out my SEO checklist. It's inside my free chat GPT SEO course, links in the comments in the description. And you can run through step-by-step -step exactly how to create a very high quality article based on all of the guidelines right here. Would highly recommend it. Mr. Frank says, guess yo, hilarious. Yeah, that's one I actually learned from Matt Diggity, I think when I was interviewing him recently. And I've picked it up and used it in every single video since. Coding says how much your work and income on autopilot, pretty much everything apart from YouTube, right? So YouTube is where I dedicate most of my time into. And actually, if I look, I, I, I try and look at, okay, what brings me the most money out of everything? And I would say email, YouTube, Twitter, and thinking sessions. These are the four things that bring me the most money. Everything else is automated or runs like clockwork in the background. You know, I have a big team of people working for me, etc. So and um, Palash says Google is penalizing both human written content sites and AI generated content sites. In this case, what should we do? And I would say again, diversify your traffic, right? So don't just rely on Google. If you feel like it's a hard game on Google, make sure that you do diversify your traffic. How? By using all the channels that we're talking about today. For example, YouTube, for example, Twitter, Facebook groups, LinkedIn, etc., email lists. These are all the best ways to diversify your traffic. Now, talking to email lists, how do you actually set these up? Well, I'm gonna show you an example of how we do it on our content. So if I go to my website right here, and um, we'll just go to the blog as an example of how we collect email addresses. We'll check this one right here. Now, in fact, we'll go on this one. Yeah, let's go on this one, right? Now, if you look at this particular page, what you've got right here is a chat bot down here to convert leads into sales so they can ask questions, et cetera. And then we get people to the email list via here as well. And also with the free SEO strategy session in the top right, right? Feel free to book that links in the comments in the description. So essentially you want to diversify your traffic with email lists by creating something of massive value. Now, when I say massive value, here's an example. So for example, get free instant access to our SEO video course, 120 SEO tips, a chat GPT course, 999 ways to make money, and a free 30 minute consultation, right? The value that we give away is absolutely huge. And that's how you get a high conversion rate. In fact, I think the conversion rate for our chat GPT SEO course right here, in terms of how many people land on the page versus actually opt in, is actually about 56% right? So it brings in loads of email opt-ins. The more email opt-ins you get from your relevant audience, the more money you can make, right? That's how it works. Coding says, have you used Ezoic ads? Absolutely. Yeah, you can use Ezoic, Adstera, Mediavine. Mediavine just launched Journey as well. So there's all different ways you can use emails. Uh, sorry, you can use ads to monetize. And Mr. Frank says, any tips for cold email tools? Seeing MailScale and Salesforge, but not sure if it's worth the money. I've never tried those two tools that you mentioned, but Lemlist, Hunter.io, very powerful tools for doing cold email. Would recommend. So let's have a look what else we've got on the list. So we have covered so far Twitter, YouTube Lives, YouTube, LinkedIn, email lists. We've talked about Bing, Facebook groups. The final one that I want to recommend is custom GPTs, right? So you can create tools around things people are interested in for example, like video thumbnails, and then you just share them openly with your audience. 
And these are basically programmed to generate more traffic to your funnels as well as help the user, right? So for example, someone lands on here and they're like, right, I want an AI generated image. What you can do with the custom GPTs is you can create something useful, for example, like a thumbnail generator. In fact, the actual thumbnail for this YouTube live was generated with this custom GPT, as you can see right here. And how can I prove that? Well, if you look at this conversation where I've actually generated it here, I just said, right, give me a video thumbnail for SEO is dead. It gave me this one. I didn't quite like it. So I was like, okay, it needs to be more like a shocked AI robot on a graveyard, etc. Then it gave me this pretty nice, decent click through rate, probably on the YouTube video. I can check that in a second, actually. And basically these sort of tools are programmed to, to not just help the user, but also send traffic to our funnels, right? So you can see in every response, it recommends people booking a free strategy session right here. And we also track the UTM. So we track where people have come from. So for example, it says UTM equals GBT. So if people book in an SEO strategy session from this particular tool, we can track it and see that it's come from a custom GBT. And then additionally, we send people to a free SEO checklist, which has links to our funnels again. Right. And this is just another way of getting more traffic into your funnels so that you can grow your audience. You can make more money and you're diversified away from SEO, which can be high risk at times. Right. And so you always want to think, how can I diversify now? Just to give you an idea of the click through rate, I'm going to check what the average CTR of a YouTube video is. So the average YouTube video can get like as low as 2% on a CTR. Right. Whereas this one, which we generated literally with two prompts, as you can see, first one here and then second one down here, actually got a CTR of 7.3%. So these tools are super powerful as well. It's not just like we're giving away crap for, for no reason. So let's just go through some of the other questions that we've got right here. But yeah, just to, to recap, so we've covered Twitter, YouTube, video lives, LinkedIn, email lists, Bing, Facebook groups, custom GPTs. And I've shown you exactly how we monetize and get traffic from each of those methods and how powerful they can actually be. So JN says quality content, Claude, chat GPT or Gemini. I think Claude is obviously the best from what I've seen so far. Feels a lot more human like, but again, you have to manually edit that content, use the SEO quality checklist, quality control it before you publish, etc. Saga says in your experience, what role does content quality play in attracting and retaining website visitors? Massive role, absolutely massive, right? The better your content is, the better you're going to perform in terms of getting traffic to your website and converting that into money, right? As an example, if I can create the best possible videos I can in SEO and give away all my secrets, then I'm going to make way more money in terms of, you know, my SEO agency because it's the best content. I've given the most value I can. Whereas if the content quality was poor and all AI generated with one click, nobody's going to watch that. Nobody's going to engage with that. No one will book in a sales call. Jay and Gildo says, what if Google can detect Gemini generated content and reward the content? I don't think they ever will. And coding says, is it available in the free plan? I think we need to subscribe for this. Yeah. So you do need to subscribe, but it's like $20 a month, right? And if you don't have $20 a month to invest into chat GBT, well, number one, it's going to save you thousands of hours. So it will probably bring back a lot of money too. But additionally, it's going to help you, you know, I mean, what I would say is if you can't afford $20, just do some client work, you know, and save enough money so that you can afford to invest $20 a month or get them to pay for it. Dan Jones says, seriously, good videos, Julian. Thanks very much. Keep them coming. Yeah, that's it. I'm happy to help. And I've pretty much shared all my secrets today in terms of LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, how all these platforms work, etc. If you want to see more videos or more detailed breakdowns about each one, let me know. Maybe I can point you in the right direction or just create a more detailed video about it. But I pretty much answered every single question on the call today. Appreciate everyone who watched. Shout out to Doug Cunnington who joined the call as well. Shout out to Mr. Frank who also did a super chat during the call. So I appreciate everyone who's watching and I'll see you on the next one. If you want to get my free chat GPT SEO course, links in the comments and description shows you how to create content and quality control and manually edit it. And additionally, if you want to check out a free SEO strategy session, you can check out that inside the description as well. Hopefully the calendar link works. I've never seen it go down before. And Juanita says, will this live be saved? Yeah, absolutely. So if you go in the lives section of YouTube, you'll see the live save right there. 
Billy says, shout out to Billy. Shout out to Billy. Absolutely. And Mr. Frank says, so much value out. Thanks so much again. Honestly, man, can't tell you how much you appreciate it. It's great to have people like you on the channel and what an amazing community we have. So yeah, appreciate everyone watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.